Yeah, uh, thank you very much. First and foremost to the organizers, Donovan and Miriam, but also to everyone behind the scenes running the show and dealing with people that maybe don't send slides in on time. Um, so I will be talking about um, some work in progress um, with uh, Miriam, Marcus, Ethan, and Hao, uh, who are uh, uh, most of them in the audience. And I especially encourage you to talk to Ethan and Hao, the two of the local grad students who have done excellent work on this. Um, so it will be about, uh, uh oh, okay. Um, so uh, I think everyone probably has noticed one more not that two of the main themes of this workshop are about swamp length and generalized symmetries. And clearly it's a suitable conference with this topic because a lot of progress, recent progress, a lot of the active research in this field have been inspired by considerations, uh, works on geometric engineering or uh, string compactifications. And um, I refer you to Michaela's talk about a lot of uncharted territory still in this uh, by now uh, fairly advanced field. And one of these uncharted territories I want to talk about is uh, what's known as frozen singularities. So these are um, compactification backgrounds where uh, the data is not just pure geometry, uh, but instead there are some additional, uh, in the context that we're talking about, additional um, fluxes, fractional fluxes or holonomies of uh, background gauge fields of string and M theory that one has to specify on top of the geometry. And um, in these settings, it's a little bit more challenging to understand really what the resulting landscape of effective field theories are. And if you do these things in compact manifolds, what uh, the resulting effective quantum gravity theories are. And also in the context of generalized symmetries, uh, how we should think, uh, be thinking about the um, spectrum of extended operators and their interplay between different dimensional uh, um, topological operators. So um, of course, eventually, the idea, one of the ideas of this uh, understanding both of these would be to see maybe some feedback from this side of the uh, general symmetry um, studies to maybe understand some aspects about effective field theories of quantum gravity, uh, where um, just based on local dynamics, um, you're missing out some of the uh, core features. And um, so this is an ambitious task in full generality. So to get started in some more simple, tractable setting, I'll uh, we'll just do the usual, uh, as already Craig and Monica have um, alluded to, I add some symmetry and consider small, dim low dimensional compact uh, dimensions. So compactifications to seven, eight, nine, D, et cetera. So uh, for the plan of this talk, I will first review some of the works uh, we've done in uh, last year about uh, a comprehensive analysis of compactifications of F theory with frozen singularities. In this case, it's well known to just be compactifications in the, in the language of uh, type 2b with uh, 07 plus plane. And the core tool that we employ are uh, junctions of PQ strings and five frames. And we will see that as a side product of this, actually, it al allows you to also categorize um, nine dimensional n equals one supergravity vacua. Uh, then I will move to some ongoing work about uh, frozen singularities in seven dimensional M theory. Um, and again, I will try to sneak in these junctions in a very uh, a peculiar way, that, in a way that may, you may not have expected, but it um, uh, actually turns out to be very helpful, in particular to understand the generalized higher form symmetries of these compactifications. And then I will mention some, um, uh, uh, some aspects of topological operators, again, connecting more to the generalized symmetry uh, part of the story in the context of compactifications of type 2a to six dimension uh, with uh, some version of frozen singularities. Okay, so let me start uh, with the one, the simplest perhaps uh, setting in, 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 in this set of uh, uh, models. So in compactifications to eight dimensions of type 2b or just say the, the world volume series of seven brains, uh, the only type of frozen singularities that I can arise in this context is just if I introduce uh, 07 plus planes. Um, these, do not fraction, uh, these do not split into PQ brains uh, in, in F theory, 
uh, and, and it shows up by having um, a, a singularity associated to some Kodaira type, but without the uh, associated gauge dynamics. And you require these in that eight dimensions to uh, 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 engineer uh, non simply lace SPN gauge symmetry. And in the case of global models, meaning um, compactifications in the F3 setting, for example, in case three manifolds or uh, a type to be with, uh, with uh, 24 seven brains or a total uh, uh, trivial monodromy, um, the, there's a dual description in terms of the heterotic string um, using um, uh, on a T2 compactification with possible holonomies for the gauge field. And uh, in these cases, there is uh, an alternative description of these models using lattice embedding techniques. And these have been employed successfully uh, very recently to really do the full categorization of these models. Um, but what we're interested in is more a, a local perspective in the sense that we would expect that it's not just a feature um, that you, uh, free, this, this uh, freezing singularities is not just a feature you see in the full um, compact model, more it should be thought of as something you do at a local uh, configuration of seven brains uh, as you pass from a non-frozen to a frozen uh, setting. And locally, uh, we, we, uh, we, we employ the techniques of string junctions. And for standard PQ7 brains, um, the, the uh, junctions encode the gauge dynamics of the eight-dimensional n equals, n equals one to young mills in a uh, well-understood manner. And I forgot to cite the references going back to the uh, 90s. Um, but uh, these references here are more related to the fact that um, I can think of the center symmetry, so one form and, and, and five form magnetic symmetries of these, uh, of these uh, gauge theories in terms of string junctions that extend to infinity rather than just um, junctions that go between the individual PQ7 brains that form the roots. And um, these, these um, extended junctions uh, or asymptotic junctions have a nice interpretation also in and the FM duality to uh, works um, to, to the more modern perspective on generalized symmetries in terms of some extended charge objects um, in the geometry of M theory. So, um, but in the case of an O7 plus plane, the story gets slightly uh, modified. So it's, as I already said earlier, um, O7 plus looks like, if I just uh, encircle it with pro PQ charges, it looks like an SO16 stack. But there are no local gauge dynamics. In that, in that sense, it's frozen as Witten has uh, uh, coined the term in 97. And, uh, and, it, and additionally, um, the way uh, the um, including O7 pluses in um, more general constructions modifies the story is that now only PQ strings with even P and Q charge can end on such an O7 plus. And these, rules, if you wish, for how junctions connect O7 pluses to other PQ type brains are necessary precisely to, for example, furnish the long roots of an SP gauge symmetry. In this case, you need to uh, stretch a, dub, a, a, two, a two funk string basically from one of the A brains to the O7 plus. And in this story, again, um, I won't go into the details too much, but essentially looking at these extended junctions that we had earlier, where we think about uh, PQ junctions of five brain webs or strings that encircle the entire um, configuration, you are able to uh, also predict correctly the Z21 form and five form symmetry charges of an SP. And I wanna just point out that this is in some sense a non-trivial check uh, because as I said, uh, in, 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 if that was an SO16 stack, then this entire thing would be another SO type of gauge symmetry. And there you would expect to have Z4 or Z2 times Z2 uh, uh, higher form symmetries, and the fact that with these modified junction uh, rules for the junctions, you produce the correct Z2 factor, not the higher form, is a uh, good cross check. And um, from this local picture, we can move to a more to the global models now by just imagining gluing these local patches of stacks of seven brains, including potential O7 pluses, with the um, obvious restriction that the total configuration should have trivial monodromy. And when you draw junctions, they're not allowed to end at infinity. And um, first of all, of course, it, um, it produces the correct um, set of gauge algebras 
in uh, in compact eight dimensional n equals one over gravity you get from um, from, from say to um, heterotic dual description, but also in this description it's fairly uh, uh, you get in a very manifest way uh, the the data about the full gauge group topology of the configuration and. It's the idea that uh, you have to basically connect these previously extended weights that encircle the individual stacks now to something that encircles all the stacks. But because the thing is compact, you can shrink this loop on the other side of the compact base of F theory, if you wish, and that becomes a trivial junction. So, so certain types of trivial junctions that can be equivalently expressed as a sum of extended junctions for individual weights, uh, individual stacks, encode for you the global structure of the gauge group in a dimensional n equals one square gravity. And actually um, in hindsight, after the papers by Hector and Miguel, and also as mentioned by Miguel yesterday in his talk, we realized that in this classification we had in, where we wrote down all the uh, configurations of uh, seven brains, it also actually included the new uh, um, branch of moduli space uh, where in this F theory construction, you need two O7 pluses. Um, and um, another uh, interesting spin-off of the story is that um, if I allow myself to now form uh, so-called affine stacks, so where I affinize the um, simple uh, Lie algebra, then the resulting junction description now is that of a nine-dimensional n equals one supergravity theory. And this is a natural generalization in the case of having O7 pluses to the story of uh, Timo and uh, Sonju and uh, Wolfgang um, for F theory with uh, on ordinary case threes where they explain this um, affinization and the resulting uplift to nine dimensions in terms of some uh, infinite distance limits of the K3 moduli space. And again, the one of the highlight of course in, in, in that um, uh, description using junctions is that uh, you get basically for free also a classification or categorization of the gauge groups in nine dimensional n equals one. Also, I stressed again that we, in hindsight, we also spot, had the correct uplifts of the new versions of uh, nine dimensional uh, rank one moduli branches. So yeah. Yes. So, so uh, yeah. References to somewhere else. So, so Guranik had a paper about this, and some um, in the context of uh, K threes. Um, there was another paper by a Japanese group about the same story in DP nine, and the connection there was that they had a uh, uh, yeah, they they could show that these global null junctions are related to the mod veil torsion. So, so in F theory, no, at least without frozen singularities, that encodes a global gauge group topology. In the case with O seven pluses. The same story runs through, but doesn't invoke ne necessarily the connection to model veil, et cetera. It's just based on sort of a, uh, a restric restriction of your charge lattice, if you wish, in, in the language of uh, say completeness and no global symmetry. Uh, yeah, can I ask you So, when you say the fact that you can very probably the group, are you talking about a yeah, yeah. You, you tie them together, uh, sorry, right? In, in this thing, each dot here corresponds to a stack with some gauge algebra. The way you construct these global junctions tell you what the overall uh, uh, gauge group is. And that, uh, by the way, also includes like the gravity photons from uh, 10D to, to lower dimensions. So also the U1 factors in this case can be encoded in these things. Okay, so now, um, the, I, I, uh, this was sort of more an appetizer to now motivate uh, what we uh, use in order to describe now frozen singularities and M theory. And again, for simplicity, I will just consider compactification of seven dimensions. That is uh, M theory on a C2 mod gamma for some gamma uh, AM, uh, ADE type finite group. And these engineer seven dimensional um, super young Mills theory. And in the case of no frozen fluxes or, or just vanilla um, geometric background. Um, the general asymmetries of these, uh, or in this case, the, the high form symmetries, so the center of the gauge, uh, gauge group is encoded nicely in the relative homology of the quotient or equivalently in the boundary homology 
of the uh, speed sphere or lens space at infinity. Um, but now we have the option to turn on a holonomy for C3 at the um, speed sphere at infinity. And this um, leads to a rank reduction, according to these authors, in the seven dimensional Young Mills theory to a new frozen gauge symmetry. So uh, the one that we're familiar with also in F theory, so it's in eight dimensions, it's basically this case where you start from SO and you freeze to an SP gauge symmetry. In M theory, you're allowed to have more options, and these are determined by the uh, holonomy, uh, where you get from E8 and E6, E7, and E8, some other type of um, potentially non symmetry laced gauge algebras. And again, in a global setting, i.e., M theory on a frozen K3 surface, you can again uh, uh, um, exploit the duality of heterotic uh, now uh, on compactified on a three torus with triples, as these also calls it. And uh, this results again in a classification of the 7D landscape uh, of supergravity theories uh, using lattice techniques. But in this global picture from the lattice, you're missing out somehow. A, a more microscopic description of really the freezing mechanism at the singularity, because you sort of just uh, look at essentially the entire uh, set of uh, momentum states on the torus and rearrange them in some um, fashion that affects multiple sub, uh, singularities at once in general. And moreover, uh, what we're really curious about is can we also have a similar description for the general asymmetries in these cases uh, by uh, that is somehow just uh, in an inherently M theory, M, M theoretic uh, fashion encoded in the geometry plus this flux data. So this, to, to tackle this is actually surprisingly difficult, um, but one way to tackle this is following a procedure that um, Tachikawa has also laid out in his 2015 paper here. Um, and it is to imagine that I embed the local ADE singularity with some flux into elliptic vibration uh, over a, com a complex, uh, uh, complex uh, about a, a disk, where the central fiber degenerates into a Kodara uh, um, uh, fiber that corresponds to an AD type, a, a, a G as here. Now you take a set of uh, string dualities, and this leads you to what's known as a type to be shift oriented fold, uh, which equivalently can be thought of as F theory on a related elliptic vibration yd times a circle and then you do an overall discrete quotient and this related elliptic vibration is in some sense a default cover of my original vibration with the g type fiber and um in the in the type 2b case this is really a in, in type to be um description this is really a default cover of the base of y where you then um reduce the opening angle deficit angle created by the original single fiber in Y. And um, the, the quotient by ZD here is also acting on the, um, on the uh, gauge symmetry or the gauge algebra that you would naively associate to F theory on this elliptic vibration YD. It acts in a precise manner as specified by automorphism, alter automorphism, and the resulting folding, if you wish, is precisely the frozen algebra associated in the, to the um, polynomial you specified in the beginning. This? Yes. It's a shift on the S1, exactly, yeah. That, it's a shift on the S1. Okay, so. Sorry. Right. So this, this is the table that I shamelessly took out of uh, Tachikawa's paper. And um, basically what you want to focus on is uh, this column here that specifies the uh, elliptic vibration Y with the ADE type um, here that you start with where you put the additional frozen flux on. And you take the default cover and the resulting elliptic vibration now has a different type of uh, singular fiber with these associated uh, gauge algebras and F theory. And the corresponding auto automorphism is almost, almost always just the order of the um, uh, sorry, D should be uh, be written out somewhere. Well, uh, yeah, D is the denominator in these fluxes, 
it's always almost always the denominator of these um, uh, fluxes, except in this one case where it's a subgroup. So that's why I had previously written a subgroup because it, this is a Z2 automorphism with SU3, but uh, you start with an order four um, uh, flux. And one thing that um, you may notice if you stare at it for long enough is that the number of seven brain in, in the resulting default cover to engineer the corresponding singularity is D times the number of, uh, sorry, it's the number, uh, okay, and just write it here. <laughs> the number of seven brains in the uh, default cover is D times the number of the seven brains in the original guy plus a multiple of 12, okay? D minus one copies this basically. And if you think about it slightly more without doing the math and you recognize that, well, 12 D7 brains is precise the number you would need to facilitate the singular fibers on a DP9. And in fact, it's not a coincidence because if I really do D copies of the seven brain for, for the original elliptic perturbation started with, I perform some hanani witten moves on the seven brain configuration. I end up with the seven brain configurations of, um, of the default cover plus a number of copies of not just any 12 sets of seven brains, but really uh, the, the loop, uh, the affinized, um, double affinized uh, um, uh, E8 algebra, in this case, E9 hat. Okay. So let's look at an example. Here I start with um, SO12 on both sides. Um, now I have to do a hananin witten transition where I move the 6A brain past the BC brain. That gives me a to the 12, but then a to the 12 contain and with the two factors of BC, BC, this is exactly the E9 hand. And you're left over with an a to the four, which is precisely the SU4. That uh, is the twofold cover of uh, SO6, uh, SO12, sorry. Okay. But it's, it's not just at the level of brains that you can now study this. You can now also look at the junctions in this case. And to be more precise, you look at the root junctions on each of the SO12 stack and track what happens to them as you perform these hanani witten transitions. And as you move some of the stacks across others, what will happen is that junction that had prongs on one of them will now emanate an additional prong on the things that have moved around. So what happens after all, all of this uh, gymnastics is that you find um, if you want to now have um, linear combinations of the original SO12 rules that can be detached entirely from this E9, then they, there's only a subset of these that are allowed. And it turns out that these things, these uh, linear combinations of the SO12 rules are precisely the subspace, the root lattice of now the SU4, which are so which survive the um, auto automorphism quotient. Okay, so in this case, you have uh, and uh, two junctions that you can write in terms of uh, strings propagating for uh, stretching between the A's, but because of some conditions that related them to the E nines there's going to be one linear combination that is a long root. So that has norm squared four rather than two. Yes, exactly. And I should say, of course, that um, this, this thing uh, uh, Jim has worked uh, with his collaborators has extensive work on that. Um, and they're also uh, we benefit from some, some of uh, Howe's uh, knowledge about a recent paper where the same kind of quotient appears in the context of s -folds. Okay, so, and now the geometric interpretation of this in M theory should now be this set of linear combinations. Well, they were just a linear combination of my original roots in G. They can be thought of as two cycles in my original elliptic vibration. And these should now be the ones that are allowed to be wrapped by M2 brains after performing the freezing mechanism. And in fact, as uh, Howe will show in, uh, in his one minute Gong Show talk later, the set of these roots have a fairly simple characterization in terms of the uh, thinking diagram. So I, out of uh, keeping the tension, I will not 
say any uh, say anything to spoil uh, uh, your 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 curiosity. Um, in any case, what happens in this context is also that uh, because of our um, experience with with dealing with uh, extended junctions and how they encode the center symmetry, we can now construct also these corresponding weight junctions in the um, default cover uh, as some invariant um, extended junctions under the outer automorphism. So in particular, that's the thing I want to highlight here is that in the case of an E8 uh, singularity with one quarter frozen flux, the frozen singularity is SU2. So you would expect that just based on field theory that it should happen Z2 center symmetry. Um, and this is indeed confirmed by this junction analysis, but it's somewhat unexpected if you just uh, looked at the geometry and applied um, uh, applied the 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 the, uh, uh, the 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 vanilla cooking recipe to determine the high form symmetries without taking into account the flux. Okay, so in the last five minutes, let me just move on to now a different set of uh, compactifications. So I should say that going to 2A is actually a natural place to learn a bit more about the M theory setting, because even though this has a nice kind of a, um, uh, hand, a computational tool, these junctions to compute the high form symmetries, et cetera, and these um, frozen singularities, it still is not really giving you a microscopic explanation of why you cannot wrap in M2 brains on these cycles. And we have some ideas how to proceed. And one of them to make that very sharp is to consider the type, two, type 2A version of this freezing, where you again compactify type 2A on a C2 mod gamma. This gives a six dimensional gauge theory. And I can do a similar freezing that reduces the gauge rank by turning on some Ramon Ramon uh, two form flux or uh, one form holonomy on a one cycle in this, um, on the boundary of this space. And, and this supposedly should have a double T dual version to M theory where now this one form holonomy turns into a three form holonomy. And then you might be able to hope to uplift this to uh, M theory um, and, and, uh, and use an understanding for this particular freezing, which is uh, well understood in the M theory context with three form flux. But doing this double T dual is quite hard. And um, uh, yeah, we're, we're still working on this. But um, in connection to what we heard about in our in previous talks and also, uh, uh, that were mentioned several times and explained by these authors um, here in the holographic and also in geometric engineering context, this kind of flux is intimately related to a set of topological operators that you get by wrapping brains on the boundary of the compactification. And in particular, in this case, in type 2A, the one from flux can be seen by topological operators you obtain from the zero brains that wrap the one cycle in the boundary. And in terms of the field theory, uh, this, the vets of these point-like operators should not be nothing but the holonomy of the ones, uh, of the uh, uh, one form plus. And now there is a uh, intriguing connection to uh, this, what's called the phenomenon of decomposition. So topological point operators, as we've heard from uh, now several talks, they should uh, give rise in general to D minus one form symmetry. And um, by uh, uh, essentially uh, um, Eric and his collaborators over the past uh, 15 years or so have shown in various examples that having a D minus one form symmetry leads to a separation of your quantum field theory into distinct universes, where essentially each of these universes don't talk to another, at least not in terms of the local dynamics. Um, and they're separated by some infinite domain, uh, tension domain walls, which should be thought of as a charged object on a D minus one symmetry. In this case, it's just these six brains wrapping the corresponding uh, relative cycle, which ends on the boundary in the, in the one cycle uh, that the D zero is wrapping. And normally you would expect in this story, uh, which mostly has been explained, uh, explored in the context of or befolds um, uh, in, in two dimensions and three dimensions, you would expect that the universes have the same local dynamics. But here, the universes are clearly labeled by the different frozen fluxes, which correspond to different six-dimensional gauge symmetry. 
So it's not clear to us yet whether this is a counterexample in the sense that the universes in this more general version of decomposition don't have to have the same local dynamics. Um, in any case, there's also a dual minus one from the symmetry description where you can imagine obtaining this D minus one from engaging a D mi uh, minus one from symmetry. And these should have topological space-time filling operators. In this case, these would be the six brains wrapping the one cycles on the boundary. And so you could imagine if uh, the gauging procedure corresponding to sort of tensoring your six dimensional uh, super young mills with these topological sectors, whether these can somehow modify the local supersymmetric dynamics at least. Okay, so uh, since I'm out of time, let me just briefly summarize. I, um, we, I, um, I told you about some uh, classification work in eight dimensional n equals one supergravity using junctions, which also propagates the classification of nine dimensional super, uh, um, supergravity. And surprisingly, these junctions can also be used to shed light on some of the properties of 7D M theory compactification with frozen singularities. And in six dimensional type 2A, there are some more exotic topological operators that we find, and uh, it's still an unclear to us how exactly this ties to some other story in the literature. And so I have already mentioned some of the obvious questions that um, we need to address. Um, and of course, uh, one maybe more exciting application towards the uh, not so near future is what, uh, how I can use these things in compactification to lower dimensions and to supergravity, but also to say superconformal field theories in six, five, four dimensions. Okay, sorry for running a bit over time. So we don't know how to see the strict data and what we can say in terms of the O-setting plus configuration, right? So we already said we need two separate two O setting classes. And the question is how you arrange them to get just so they're over one. And there are two different configurations where in one configuration, both of the O-setting classes have the same and so the conjugate class in terms of the model. And the other one has Different as a So the you know the the, the two the monogram is around the two of them are somehow the same in one setting, but not the same. Mm -hmm. One question from you. Actually, I don't know the rules of the game. Right. So indeed, I mean, from what we just heard by Inyaki, it's not at all obvious that, um, yeah, these D zero brains on the one cycle should correspond to genuinely uh, um, topological operators. Maybe there is some kind of free wooden anomaly that forbids them. All I'm saying is just at face value, if I um, don't turn on a flux, to, uh, in the first place, and I just start wrapping my D0 brains around the boundary, they would clearly, well, they should at least uh, naively give you some topological operators and they're point like operators. So uh, the, the rest of them you can think of now in terms of this decomposition story as projecting to one of the universes. And in yes, yes, yeah, good point. Yeah, I didn't know that. But, uh, good point. So it's an Indeed, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. So the 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 only thing in the eight dimensional case where you have non critical over group topology, then you should have minus one more of the case. Um, if I reverse this kind of this 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 thing here, because you have this many equal qualities, like we would expect there to be some decomposition. Uh, is that a correct thing? Um, I, I'm not quite sure what you mean by disconnected uh, local operators. So, for example, if you just call it a gap, you go, then the local gauge dynamics would be the same to a Right. So, if you can give a non trivial global group structure, which makes you do things, which you tell you some kind of like line operator, but the local dynamics. Right. And so, 
that would translate from the same system the composition based on what you are here, that would be important. Well, I mean, it's a very specific way, right? So, so the point here is that you you have you really need a set of topological point of local operators, and then you can use these co to construct some projection into these different sectors. So, so I uh, from the top of my head, I don't know what the corresponding say d minus one from symmetry or the topological point of the repeat that separates these sectors, but it's I I, I don't want to rule it out. Maybe there's something interesting there. Right, maybe it's going to have to be zero. Right, but it's like that's 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 that's